Hi, I'm Mary. I'm an environmental consultant and a facts qualified advisor. This video is one of my ammonia emissions from agriculture series. Ammonia is a key air pollutant that can have significant effects on both human health and the environment. I'm focusing today on liquid organic manures, including slurry and liquid digestate from anaerobic digestion. By slurry, this includes pig slurry and cow slurry. So just taking a step back, ammonia from agriculture, where does it come from? Around 90% of ammonia emissions are from agriculture, and this includes all stages of livestock production. Firstly, during housing, be that outside or in, plus diet, which together I call lifestyle. Secondly, from stored organic manures, and finally during application to land. So today my focus is on storage. In some EU countries, slurry covers are now mandatory for reducing ammonia emissions. This video provides an overview of different types of impermeable covers. I have separate videos where I talk about the other aspects shown here. So there are three main ways to reduce ammonia emissions once the manure or slurry is being stored. Firstly, by decreasing the surface area where the emissions can take place. This can be done by either covering the store in a range of ways depending on the store type, with impermeable covers being what I'm going to talk about today. Other options include permeable covers, encouraging crusting or by increasing the depth of the store. The second main method is acidification. This is starting to be used in some countries, including Denmark. And thirdly, minimising disturbances such as aeration. This would include stirring the slurry as little as possible. Not all methods will be suitable for all types of slurry and manure, and some also work for digestates. For new stores on intensive poultry and pig farms in the UK, covers are now compulsory, unless other ammonia emission reduction techniques, such as acidification, are used. Also, covers are required for some livestock types in other countries, including Germany and the Netherlands. The other methods will be discussed as part of this video series on reducing ammonia emissions from agriculture. So why cover liquid, slurry and digestate stores? This is a basic diagram of a slurry store that is not covered, such as an above ground store or a lagoon. So the slurry contains ammonium, NH4+. Ammonia and odorous gases are produced by microbial activity in the slurry. These gases rise to the surface and are released into the atmosphere at varying rates, particularly on warm and windy days. This is called diffusion. The more that this occurs, the more nitrogen is lost as ammonia, meaning the slurry or digestate contains less nitrogen and so has a lower fertiliser value. Rain will increase the liquid in the store and hence the volume which needs to be spread. All slurry stores have a maximum fill level which is called a freeboard, properly defined as the vertical distance between the top of the tank or lagoon and the surface of the slurry. The freeboard height varies depending on the type of store. For example, in the UK this is 750mm for lagoons and 300mm for circular stores. Putting an impermeable cover on the store, as shown here in yellow, will reduce the amount of ammonia formed and at the same time retain the nitrogen in the slurry as ammonium. This is where we really want the nitrogen to be, ready for fertilising crops once spread. The cover will also prevent rain from getting in and prevent the release of odours. So putting this into perspective, let's think about a 50 by 100 metre slurry lagoon. So in one year, for an area with an average rainfall of 65 centimetres per year, it's about right for some of the drier parts of England, 3,250 metres cubed of rain will enter the lagoon. If it costs £2.50 per metre cubed to spread the slurry, the extra cost to the farmer of spreading the slurry, plus the rainwater, is over £8,000 a year. This could be saved by installing a cover. So now on to the three main types of liquid slurry and digestate stores used in the UK. So there are below ground lagoons, above ground cylindrical metal tanks and concrete stores. 
In my manure slurry and digestate store overview video, I describe each of these store types in more detail. Storage bags are now also used for slurries and I will discuss them briefly, but they are less relevant here as they are self-contained and do not require a cover. So how to cover a lagoon? The same principles apply for clay lined and plastic lined lagoons. Both can be covered with a floating cover which is generally made of plastic materials such as PVC or EDPM. These can be installed at the same time as the lagoon is made or also re retrofitted onto existing lagoons. The lagoon must be emptied first. So the edges of the cover are buried into the lagoon banks to retain it. The cover floats above the slurry or digestate surface so will go up and down as liquid is added or removed. When planning to install the cover, the method for mixing of the slurry or digestate needs to be considered. One option is to integrate a mixing hatch in the cover, as shown on the photo on the top right. Alternatively, mixers can be mounted onto a concrete pad and fitted inside a steel frame to protect the floating cover, as shown on the photo on the bottom right. Mixing systems are generally electric or tractor driven. Once installed, rainwater can be pumped off the top of the cover. So there are several options for metal and concrete cylindrical stores, including a tensioned cover. This is a lightweight cover, also called a tent, and available for most new circular steel and concrete tanks supplied in the UK. These are often made from heavy gauge polyester with PVC coating. They can be suited to retrofitting to existing tanks, but not every container is suitable for tension cover. Especially steel tanks may not have the required static load capacity to withstand wind and snow with a tent cover on. Some stores can be reinforced to accept the extra load. It's important that covers are well sealed to minimise air exchange, but there must be a small opening or way of venting to prevent the accumulation of methane gas. Here are some photos showing how a tensioned cover is installed on a concrete store as an example. You can see on the photo on the left, the central pole or mast. This is then mounted on the floor of the store. Straps or spokes open out to the perimeter. Then the per flexible covering is stretched over the spokes. Covers are usually sloped around 15 to 17 degrees. So any rainwater will be shed from the surface and ideally will be collected. A floating cover is particularly suitable for covering existing cylindrical tanks that cannot bear the weight of a tensioned cover. A plastic sheet, such as PVC, is tensioned around a plastic hoop. This sheet floats directly on top of the slurry, so the whole sheet rises and falls with the level of the slurry, in the same way as the lagoon floating cover. Again, mixing hatches can be fitted into the cover, or suitable submersible mixers may be used. Rainwater collected on the cover needs to be pumped off. So in thinking about covering a slurry or digestate store, here are a few things that you should discuss with your installer. Firstly, how to get the slurry or digestate into the store and out again once the cover is on, with some options shown in the photos. Mixing is important. Be sure that what you remove from the store and then spread is uniform so well mixed so you get an even application of nitrogen and other nutrients on your crop. So in the design of your cover, you will need to think about how the slurry or digestate can be mixed, such as via a built-in stirring mechanism from the base or side, which is generally more suited to circular stores, but can also go into lagoons, or with a hatch in the cover and a removable stirrer, or aeration, which involves injecting compressed air into the slurry via non-return valves. Some kind of gas venting system will also be needed. For lagoons, this could be floating pillows and perimeter gas pipes between the lagoon liner and the floating cover. Removing rainwater is also an important consideration for all covers, be it a guttering system on a tent cover or pump for a floating cover. So just one slide on slurry and digestate storage bags. These can offer a good alternative to building a lagoon or circular store with a cover. These are flexible bags. They're made from strong polyester fabric, which has been coated on both sides with a plastic waterproof layer. They often come pre-fitted with valves for filling and emptying. They can be installed within existing storage tanks or lagoons as an alternative to installing covers. 
Alternatively, a soft bedding layer, such as wood chips, needs to be spread, and then a puncture-proof geotextile layer on top of this. And finally, the slurry storage bag can be placed on the top. These bags may not be suitable for all locations and require some form of secondary containment, such as a bund, to make sure that any leaks or spilled are contained and do not cause pollution. These bags take up more land surface area proportionally than for a raised tank. So this table summarises the ammonia reduction for the different cover types I've just been talking about. I've also included plastic sheeting for covering solid manure heaps. This can reduce ammonia emissions by around 60%. The floating covers, which are used in lagoons and also for circular tanks, reduce ammonia emissions by 60% approximately. And flexible tent and rigid roofs on circular stores can reduce emissions by 80%. Slurry bags, as they're pretty much self-contained, they can reduce ammonia emissions by up to 100%. Finally, just a few notes on health and safety. A reminder that this video series is for information only, it's not advice. So not all slurry stores and lagoons are structurally suitable for having a fixed or floating cover installed. To always have a qualified structural engineer involved from an early stage. Gas concentrations within covered slurry and digestate stores can reach lethal levels, so no one should go inside a covered store. Also, extreme caution must be used if you need to open a cover. Also, for mixing and emptying the store, make sure you have a comprehensive risk assessment for all operators and all operations. In summary, why cover slurry and digestate stores? Well, as well as reducing ammonia emissions by up to 80%, a range of other nasties including hydrogen sulphide, methane and nitrous oxide are also reduced. The odours from the store are significantly reduced, and at the same time the nitrogen is kept in the slurry where we want it, rather than being lost as ammonia. This can then be fed to crops. All impermeable covers keep the rainwater out. This means more slurry can fit in the store. The savings in store size can be order of 15% to 25% in the UK, depending on local rainfall and the volume of slurry to be stored. Keeping out the rain also reduces the field application volume, hence savings can be made in terms of time and also fuel. <coughs> DEFRA and the United Nations have codes of good agricultural practice for reducing ammonia emissions and also more useful information on covering organic manure stores. And here are some useful links for more information going into detail on this topic and also other areas of ammonia reduction in agriculture. And finally, I have some more videos in this farm ammonia reduction series, including my general overview of ammonia emissions from agriculture. My other videos consider how to reduce ammonia emissions in each step of livestock production in more detail, thinking firstly about livestock manure lifestyle, focusing on diet and housing, then managing slurry manure and digestate storage. With permeable covers, my other topic here. Finally, application to land. Let me know what you think of this video and if you have any sustainable food production related topics you feel will be useful to learn more about. Thanks for listening today.